Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss what is exactly happening in Toronto and Greater Toronto Area real estate market. Overall, the market is a bit confusing because you have corners on one side where we're not seeing much of an action and on the other side, on freehold side of things, things are quite busy and in some instances, we're also experiencing multiple offer situation. So if you're a seller or a buyer, I think this is going to be a good piece of information for you. And if you like this type of content or if you get any value out of it, then please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. So without wasting any time let's get right into it so first let's understand what type of market we are exactly in and to understand that we need to calculate month of inventory month of inventory basically means the absorption rate of the properties by the consumer in the market so the month of inventory is between one to three months we're in a seller's market if the month of inventory is between four to six months then we're in a balanced market and if the month of inventory is beyond six months then we are in a buyer's market. So in Greater Toronto area for all property types, which includes uh, detached, semi-detached, freehold uh, townhouses and condos and corner townhouses, for those we are sitting on 2.5 month of inventory. So we are in a seller's market technically. And for downtown Toronto condos, we are sitting on 4.5 months of inventory. So basically we are in a balanced market because the inventory in for condos in downtown have increased drastically. So here's a trend line of average prices of all property types in Greater Toronto area since January 2020 to April 2024. Here you can see, but we're going to focus on what's happening year over year. So that's we got going to do a comparison between April 2023 to April 2024. So if you see from April 23 to April 2024, the prices have remained more or less flat uh, and the number of sales have come down about by 5% and the active listings have gone up by 54%. So that's something we need to keep an eye out on. And if you do a month over month comparison, the prices have come up by by 3% from March 2024 to April 2024. Again, not much of a difference in my opinion. Uh, the number of sales have increased by uh, 8%. The active listings have gone up by 36%. So we've seen a month over month appreciation since February 2024 to April 24. And one of the main reason for this appreciation is because of freehold properties, because there are not many freehold properties to choose from. I agree, the active listings have, have increased, but they are primarily because of condos uh, listings have increased. But for on freehold side of things, we are not seeing much of inventory still so that's why it's what keeping the prices where they are or or that's what the prices are being supported on and going forward i don't think so we will see it that much of an upward pressure especially coming into summer months i do not think so we will see a drastic upward pressure but it also depends what bank of canada decides to do uh, with the interest rates so so bank of canada's next announcement is june 5th july 24th and september the 4th uh, my guesstimate says that i don't think so they will do anything on june 5th but chances are high they might start cutting down from July or maybe September. So who knows, but we will see how it pans out and time will tell us. And now let's check out the properties which have been sold in what price point. So for detached property, the highest number of detached property was sold between $1.2 million $50,000 to $1.499,000. That's where we can see the number is 676. Second highest detached properties were sold between a million to $1,249,000. And it 512 detached properties were sold, which were above 2 million marks. So that is pretty interesting to see that. And for coming down to semi-detached, so the highest number of semi-detached properties were sold between a million to $1,249,000. The number we're looking at is 210. And the second highest uh, semi-detached properties were sold between 900 to 999 triple line and now let's check out the townhouses and the highest number of townhouses were sold between a million to one million two hundred forty nine thousand dollars and the second highest number of townhouses were sold which were between nine hundred thousand dollars to nine hundred ninety nine thousand dollars now let's go ahead and check out what's happening in downtown Toronto for condos so let's get right into it so here are the benchmark prices for condos in CO1 area. CO1 area is basically south of Bloor Street to north of Lake Ontario to east of Dufferin Street to west of Young Street. So here you can see the trend line. If we do a year over year comparison, the prices have come down about by 5.6% 5, 5 to be precise. This is from April 23 to April 2024. That's the comparison we're doing here. And the number of sales have also come down by about 5%. And if you look, check out the active listings, they have doubled up. They have gone up by 100%. So if these listings keeps going up, we will see a downward pressure going forward, but uh, we will see how things pan out. And the main reason why we are seeing so many listings onto the market is because investors are shying away from downtown condo market. So there's not much of demand because investors are not getting into the market because of high interest rate cost and second reason is existing investors are offloading their investments as the numbers are not breaking even due to high interest rates so basically the rents they're getting that is not covering the monthly mortgage cost which might have got recently renewed so that's that's the, that's what we're looking out over here now if you do a month or a month comparison so let's do that so 
month over month the prices have remained kind of flat slightly uh, downward pressure about about by one percent or just sh less than just shy of one percent and the number of sales have increased by 12 percent and the active listings have in, again increased by 21 percent so going forward for the rest of the year i think so the prices are going to hover where they are or we might see a slight downward pressure uh, if listing goes up but but it's also very much contingent about what bank of canada decides to do now let's check out what condos have sold at what price point and if we look over here the data the max maximum number of condos have sold between $500,000 to $700,000. That's the price price point we're looking at because between 500 to 600K, 520 condos were sold in the month of April 2024 and between 600 to 700, uh, 526 condos were sold in this category. So this category is the most busiest when it comes to condos. So now let's proceed and check out key takeaways and my predictions. So let's check that out. First is rate cuts will improve ownership demand and will increase sales volume slightly. So as Bank of Canada starts cutting down the rates, there will be some positive sentiment from the consumer side of things and they will feel more comfortable getting into the market. Right now, there are so many buyers who are sitting on the sidelines from getting into the market. So once they start entering the market, we will see a slight upward pressure onto the number of sales. By all means, I'm not trying to say that the market is going to go to the moon, but we will see a slight upward pressure onto the number of sales. Prices, I think they're going to hover along where they are for the rest of the year, but we will see how things pan out. Number two is the market is in balance with low supply of freehold properties, which is continuing to support prices. This is in specific to freehold properties, I'm saying. And third is condo market is facing challenges that may persist for another one to two years, more or less probably two years, uh, because right now condo market is not in the good spot right now. And chances are very, very high in about a couple of years from now, or maybe two to three years, things might turn around for condos. And there are two reasons to it. Because of right now, developers are not building as much as they should because of high borrowing costs. So they're not building as much. And down the line, we're going to, chances are very high down the line, we're going to run into the same problem of supply. Number two reason is the price gap between freehold properties and condo is widening. So whenever that happens, that price tends to narrow down down the line. So one of the things has to happen. Either the freehold, the prices of freehold properties have to come down or the condo prices have to catch up. So one of the things have to happen. We will see what will happen down the line. And number four is the rental market is softening due to increase in supply of condos. So Finally, we have some positive news for renters. So the rents have slightly come down. I had made a specific video for rentals. You can check it out by clicking on the top right corner of this video. And that's pretty much for today. I hope you, I was able to give some value. And if you have any questions about real estate, you can book a call with me by clicking on the first link mentioned in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.